Hey guys, this is Webpig. Today I would like to show you my solution for the problem 6 in India MO. So as usual, let's go through the problem together. We are given a function f defined on the following set, which has two coordinates x and y such that x times y is different from 0. And the image of f is defined on the positive real numbers. And furthermore, we assume that f satisfies the following conditions. So the first condition is that if I fix the second coordinate, then I can factorize the first one. So which means f of x times yz equals to f of xz times f of yz. So similarly, the second condition is that we can factorize according to the second coordinate. And then we have another condition which says f of x and 1 minus x always equals to 1 for any x different from 0 and 1. Now with these three conditions in hand, we would like to prove the following properties. First, f of x x equals to 1 and also f of x minus x equals to 1 for any x. And then we would like to prove that f of x y times f of y x equals to 1 for any x and y. Well, the problem is not that difficult. However, I heard that one of the conditions has been missing during the contest, which makes the problem incorrect. I find it really ridiculous. I could never imagine that this could happen in a real context. So I'm sorry for those of you who have attended the contest, but life goes on. Anyway, let me show you my solution. So the first thing we would like to try is to take some special value. And since the conditions are on the product, it's natural to take the value 1. So if I take x equals to 1 in the first identity, I have f of 1z times f of yz equals to f of yz. And since f is positive, this implies that f of 1z equals to 1 for any z. So if I apply the same uh, thing on the second condition, we get f of x1 equals to 1 for any x. So next, let's consider the negative sign. So what happens if I take a negative sign? So indeed, if I multiply minus x by minus x, it gives x squared. So if I take f of minus xz times itself, I have f of x squared z. So I, here I use the first uh, identity, I get f of x squared z. But then I can factorize it into f of xz times of f of xz. So again, using the fact that f is positive, this means that f of minus xz is the same as f of xz. And again, I mean, by symmetry, we can prove that also f of x minus z has the same value. Then now we are going to use the third identity. So we have f of x 1 minus x equals to 1 for any x. And we know that f of 1 z equals to 1 for any z. So, well, let's multiply by 1 over x and then we get 1. So if I multiply by f of 1 over x 1 minus x, this gives f of 1 1 minus x. So since well, by assumption, the first term equals to 1, the third term also equals to 1. We have that the second term equals to 1 as well. Then now I really want to get rid of this 1 over x. So let's take x equals to 1 over y for some y. So this means f of y and 1 minus 1 over y equals to 1. So let's just do a simple calculus. This is... Uh, f of y and y minus 1 over y. So now we recognize that we are almost uh, f of y and 1 minus y, but we have a uh, problem of sign. But that's uh, 
not a problem for us because we can multiply by minus one. So we get f of y and one minus y over y equals to one. Then now I'm sure that uh, you can figure out what we are going to do. So I just multiply the this term by f of y y. So f of y one over one minus y over y times f of y y. This gives f of y one minus y. And f of y one minus y equals to one. The first term equals to one. And this implies that f of y y equals to So now we have proved the first statement. Let's see how we can use it to prove the second one. So we want to prove that f of x y times f of y x equals to one. So we really want to make it symmetric. So we see that we have x y and y x. So what it left is x x and y y. So let's just multiply it. So if I multiply f of x y by f of x x then we have f of x x y. So then I multiply f of y x by f of y y this gives f of y x y. So here I use twice the second identity. And then now you will recognize that I can multiply them again. So this gives f of x y and x y. Well, that's nice because f of x y x y equals to one, f of x x equals to one, and also f of y y equals to one. Then this is done. Well, I found the problem quite straightforward. In particular, if you know a little bit about group theory, then the first and second condition is nothing but saying that f is an automorphism according to the first coordinate and the second coordinate. Then it is natural to think about the identity element which is 1 in this case because we are in a multiplicative group and also the inverse which is 1 over x. And that's how we prove the first statement. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you like it, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you. Bye bye.